We're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome everybody to the Brunswick County Board of Education meeting for uh, December, and today is December 5th. Uh, we're going to have the invocation by uh, Ms. Milligan, and then we're going to have the presentation of the colors and our pledge uh, done by the West Brunswick High School JROTC, led by Cadet Major Ruiz. Would everybody please stand? Would you bow with me, please? Most gracious Father in heaven, we come before you this night to give thanks for all that you've bestowed upon Brunswick County Schools. You have graciously blessed us with some of the best students we could ever hope to have, one of the most awesome faculties we could ever hope to have, and we ask that you continue to do so as the new year comes about. We thank you for all that you've given us, and we ask that you guide us this night with wisdom to carry out the business of the students of Brunswick County Schools. For we humbly ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Call the guard, halt! Post, coach! time we'll turn the meeting over to uh, <coughs> Superintendent Tubb. Good evening and thank you for being here. This is a annual reorganization of the board. Um, the organizational meeting of the Board of Education has been called to order. We have a quorum present as you see. The first order of business is to elect uh, the board, uh, the board of officers tonight, and just as a reminder, um, that nominations do not require a second, nor a motion is needed to close the nomination. And at this time, do I hear nominations for the office of board chair? Mr. Superintendent, I'd like to nominate Mr. Miller as board chair. Mr. Miller, would you accept the nomination? I'd be honored. Do I hear any other nominations at this time? All in favor of Mr. Miller being elected as the board chair, please say aye. 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 Let, let the record show that Mr. Miller is duly nominated and elected as the chair of the Brunswick County Board of Education for a one-year term with a 5-0 vote. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Tuck. And thank you, my fellow board members. Um, the next order of business is, do I hear nominations for the office of vice chair? Mr. Miller, I'd like to nominate uh, Ms. Catherine Cook. Is there any other nominations? No other nominations um, call for a vote. All in favor of Ms. Catherine Cook as vice chair, please uh, indicate. Uh, Okay, let the record show that Ms. Catherine Cook is duly elected Vice Chair of the Brunswick County Board of Education for a term of one year. Thank Congratulations, Ms. Cook. All right, next thing on the agenda is our board salutes. And I will take care of this. This is a fun part of the, this meeting. Um, and it's a fun meeting um, each year. Um, we have an annual student art contest um, that has become anticipated by uh, all of us in the schools. And it's a tradition that we have the superintendent's holiday card contest and the, the winners and the cards are, are placed at Franklin Square also for people to see. Um, we invite all of the art students to participate 
and this year 13 out of our 19 schools participated. Uh, you will see that there were many, many outstanding entries uh, that were received and the selection, selection panel that was charged with uh, making the decision found it to be a very difficult decision to make this year. Um, there's four grade level categories with winners in each one of those. The winners will receive a complimentary set of 25 of their own um, outstanding card designs to share and we would like to congratulate the following students for their superior artwork and we want to recognize the students' respective art teachers, the school principals, and the parents of each of these students. The first category is K through two category, and um, this has become kind of a, a standing tradition in that Jesse May Monroe's art teacher generally um, leads the challenge in here. Uh, the winner of this category is Carter Hood. He's a first grade. Carter, if you will please stand up Look at him. He you has red forward. hair like I used to. If you'll come forward, please. <laughs> okay. Miss Alicia Williams, if you'll come down, please. And the art teacher is Teresa Ryder, and the parents of Carter. If you will stand and come down also, please. Carter, when you get old like me, the red hair turns gray. <laughs> and bald, it turn loose or gray, yes sir. Congratulations. All right, the next category. Hmm? I haven't called the second one yet. I was still talking about Carter and Jesse May. <laughs> the next category is grades three through five. Um, Tess Caron, the fourth grader at Jesse May, is um, uh, the young lady that won in this category. And again, um, uh, Ms. Ryder and Ms. Williams, if you will come down. And the parents of uh, Tess, if they will come forward too. pictures. Fantastic. Congratulations Tess and Jesse May. Grades 6 through 8 is Juliana Harold, who's a 6th grader at South Brunswick Middle School. Her art teacher is Hope Hire and the principal is Mr. Ruth. And if the parents of Juliana will come down also please. And you young people don't get too far away because we want a picture of all of you at one time with the um, Congratulations, Juliana. The last category is grades nine through 12, and Charlie Norris, who is a 12th grader at West Brunswick High School, is the winner in this category. The art teacher is Sheila Ball, and the principal is Rhonda Benton. And if, Miss Benton, if she is here, please come down, and the parents of um, Charlie, please uh, come down also. And again, um, I ask you if you ride down to um, Franklin Square in Southport and our, you will see all of the, um, the Christmas cards posted and they really are amazing. Um, all right. And I use these cards also. I send the cards out as my Christmas cards. Congratulations to all of these young folks and their parents and the school principal and to the art teachers. And you know, if you, if you really want to understand the, what I call a AAA um, 
school system. You have the academics, you have the athletics, and in athletics I consider that to be all of the extracurriculars like JROTC, the course, and those. And then you have the art programs, the music and the visual arts. This is an example of what we do in Brunswick County Schools with our young people all the way from kindergarten through the 12th grade. And it's important that we keep um, these programs in our school because it makes our school more fruitful, makes your children better um, students, and they become um, lifelong learners and they appreciate what it's about. Thank you, all of you. All right, next on our agenda is the presentations. Teacher's Voice, Ms. Phillips. I'm a little more prepared this time, so first time was uh, a little nerve-wracking. Um, if you don't mind, I just want to say hello again, and um, I, there's an art teacher I'd like to recognize. Ms. Connie Enos asked me to mention this to you guys. Um, Ms. Janet Stevenson from Waccamaw was just rewarded a $1,250 um, grant towards uh, Cheap Joe's Art Supplies given by the Oak Island uh, Art Guild. So and another example of the community supporting the arts program. Um, wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. And if you remember, Ms. Phillips is an art teacher at yes. um, Leland Middle School. <laughs> yes. Teacher um, of the Year. Thank you. Uh, I do have quite a few things on the agenda for me, if that's OK. Um, first of all, I'd like to start off by answering your question, Mr. Thompson, from last month's meeting. I don't know if you remember, um, but you asked me how I would use my background and my position as Brunswick County Teacher of the Year um, to integrate the arts into the core curriculum and hopefully doing something countywide. Um, and it's something that I've been kind of doing, but not intentionally. And so I plan for <coughs> piloting a program next semester where I take the first nine weeks of my, my art class and um, align it with a math standard from that grade level. Uh, I take the second nine weeks of my uh, art curriculum and align it with a science um, standard from that grade level and hopes to collect a lot of data. Uh, as long as it is successful, I would like to talk with the other middle school art teachers like Ms. Hope and um, we have uh, Stacy, Diane, and Janet. There, there are five of us together to see if this is something we might try next year. So that's something that you know I want to. I will be reporting back to you on that. So I hope that is kind of what you were looking for. It's great. Well, sounds like I talked to Mrs. Underwood, my principal, about it, and she's on board. And I know Mr. Kirby, as well, is excited about. This. So being a low-performing school, unfortunately, with Leland, we try, at least our arts department tries to uh, continue to help, uh, I'm sorry, we try to make sure that we are doing everything we can to help us get out of low-performing. And I feel like that's one way we can do that. Since you were mentioning that, I did, did want to mention that <clears throat> there's a program out there called Middle Schools at Work, which is a full program of that same type of integration uh, with core teachers in those subjects and CTE teachers and the arts and all that, where the whole school is working on that same concept. Is that a state program? It's a, a national program. A national, okay. But it's called Middle Schools That Work. Thank you, Mr. Lemon. I appreciate that. Um, at the at TAC's first meeting in October, um, I kind of want to talk to you guys about what TAC, where TAC is right now um, and what things we kind of want to focus on. And the best way that I've been collecting data is through surveys because we've only had one meeting. Um, I'm sorry, we've had two meetings and the first meeting was, you know, getting to know each other. We were a month behind. Um, and then the second meeting we had some business to take care of. But I wanted to give you a rundown of what the October meeting looked like. Um, and for me coming in, I asked the council a lot of questions concerning Teacher Academy. Uh, and as a group, we decided that we would like to collect valuable data to present to you based around sustainability or the continuation of Teacher Academy. Um, but more importantly, trying to figure out a way to collect data based around the effectiveness of Teacher Academy. 
uh, was did, did Teacher Academy year one meet its goal? And I believe the goal was to develop lesson plans that could be used countywide based on you know K through 12 what your curriculum was. Um, and is there a way to show growth from developing your first year? So I'm curious what you guys think, what sort of data would you like me to, or I'm sorry, TAC to um, pull together? What sort of questions should I be asking to get that effective data for you based around its effectiveness? Well, certainly, Ms. Phillips, um, one of the things that you would want to check in with them about would be how effective they were in using the lesson plans, the lesson plans that were developed. So are they using the lesson plans? Yes. Okay. And if so, how effective have they been? Okay. <coughs> Is there a way that you would know, looking at schools that may be low performing, how Teacher Academy could have affected them and their growth. I don't, I'm just trying to figure out how you would measure some right. of the things that yeah. we want to know because first of all, you 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 have specific teachers in each school. You may not you may have a handful that are in one school. You, I don't know what the you know I don't know what the um, demographics were as far as how many were from you know which schools they were all from. So one might I know I talked to a girl that was at early college this summer and she had just gone through they went through it earlier I think they did a preliminary they had a, three a pre day. preliminary training so okay. or something so she said that she really didn't think about when she went that she would change her plans but she said she changed all her plans so I know that specific to you know would just depend on the school and how they utilize that I know for me with the arts department I know Mr. Tubb has talked to us about this in TAC we started with nothing there was no unit guide for a a uh, visual art teacher, kindergarten through 12th grade, and myself and the art teachers that participated in Teacher Academy were able to have that working with teachers that have been there, have been teaching for 25 years to, we had a first year teacher in, in the room. And I, I remember thinking, like, oh my gosh, if this had been something when I first started teaching to grab onto, and I can't imagine all the things that I could have done that first year because it's, you know, it's you're kind of survival mode. And I know Teresa was there as well. Um, and we were able to make those units. And I, I didn't have to plan until the second nine weeks, just Ms. based on that week. Ms. Phillips, let me add. Yes. Um, tomorrow, we read the notes from the yes. TAC meeting, and we noticed that there was um, some questions about getting the data for uh, yes. TAC. Yes. So what we've done is we've scheduled a meeting, actually it's tomorrow, Okay. That will um, consist of myself, Mr. Cheers. We've asked Ms. Uh, Ms. Garza from okay. South, one of the oh, designers of, okay. of the uh, Teacher Academy, to come and meet with us to get some kind of have a brainstorming session on what data we can select um, and give to you as the TAC so you can present it to the board. So we're going to try to supply you as much data as we possibly okay. can. I did not know about that. Thank so, you, Dr. Ed. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. Okay, yes. One, one item that I think um, could be measured uh, that I, I believe was one of the initial purposes behind Teacher Academy, and that is to provide um, teachers more time in the classroom with instructional time as opposed to spending their time trying to create lesson plans and doing all the things that they have to be ready with. Right when they walk in the classroom. So it seems like to me, and I'd like to have some idea of whether or not we actually succeeded in helping with the idea of giving teachers more time to be teachers. I know for me I can answer that question, it did. <coughs> and I would, I would say probably based on the conversations that TAC has had, I would say about 65% would probably be along that line. Well, it would be Based really good to kind of quantify it I because agree. that was one of our primary objectives. Just out of curiosity, how many TAC members were at the Teacher Academy? Do you know? I want to mm -hmm. say, I don't know the exact number, Mrs. Cook, but I know we had over half 
had been there. And mm -hmm. when we kind of brainstormed the first day, I made sure to group everyone, small groups, where there were teachers that were at Teacher Academy and there were some that were not in the same mm -hmm. group. So the ones that were not there were, I, I wish I had been there. Mm -hmm. Because there was so much that that's a big know. percentage in that group. That so right. to me yeah. seems like it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ms. Phillips, if yes. I could one more uh, comment and I'd let you finish up. But I wanted to speak to you about your notion, um, your plan for integrating the arts into core curriculums, and subject areas. Um, I just want to maybe plant a seed, and you probably are aware of this. But the two areas that you chose, math and science uh, are also areas that a lot of children, young students, uh, tend to shy away from mm -hmm. um, by the time they're in the sixth or seventh grade. Particularly females. Particularly females. Mm -hmm. um, they don't think they're very good at math. Mm -hmm. I hear it, you know, all the time from high school kids. But it's because I think that uh, they haven't really figured it out as to how it all is relevant mm -hmm. to them in life. Mm -hmm. That's just a seed to plant with you, let you think about that, because make it more friendly for them and maybe they will embrace it. Well, the goal is to take those the, the core standards that they're learning from their math and science teachers and have them apply that knowledge into a piece of artwork mm -hmm. or into, mm -hmm. I have a 3D art class, my eighth graders, and right now we're building, um, we're studying the anatomy of cats and dogs. And they have the choice of building a cat or a dog. And the study starts with the forms, you know, your cones and cylinders and um, spheres. And that's the math tie-in. And then the anatomy part of the animal, you know, where they go and how it's made and why it looks the way it does is the science part. And so I know you're an architect, correct? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my, um, I have a lot of boys in this class because it's one they, it's an elective so they get to choose between a 2d class which is a drawing or or painting class or the the sculpture class which is building and more engineering type um architectural so well do you think it's true that uh, or is it your observation that uh, kids in middle school tend to shy away from math and science um if they don't if they get stuck i think they do I think yeah. if there's a point in their education where they get stuck with uh, a specific a content fear. area, then that's when they, mm -hmm. I, I know I read a statistic my first, it was my first or second year of teaching art that kids decide in the fifth grade whether or not they're athletic, they're artistic, <coughs> they're smart, they're pretty, and they make that decision on their own. And it's our job to make sure that we keep them thinking that that's not the case. So trying to, I used to spend a lot of time with my fifth graders, even the ones that weren't as talented as others, just, you know, yes, you are good at this. Yes, you will get better. It's a growth mindset. You know, <coughs> when kids are able to make sense of what they're doing, like making sense of math by doing it in art class, mm -hmm. I commend you for that because that, that certainly will help them enormously. Mm -hmm. Well, and putting it into <coughs> real yeah. life. And that's essentially what. So I'm lucky because I have the, the subject that can do that. We just as teachers have to make sure that that's happening intentionally. Mm -hmm. And so I think by piloting this program, it could be something. And I'm going to check into what Mr. Lemon said about the, what he knows, um, the middle schools at work. Um, but yeah, I think it could be something really great for the county. So, OK. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry? We can get you off. <laughs> well, I brought a lot, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be too much or. Um, so I, I'm, if I need to wrap it up, you just let me know. Um, so moving on from Teacher Academy. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I look forward to getting that information and presenting it to TAC. Um, our November meeting, we kind of uh, took a vote uh, as to whether we wanted to um, allow an open invitation to our TAC meetings from former Brunswick County School Teacher of the Years. Um, we almost unanimously felt like it was important to have them in the room as a mentor. So I wanted to let you know that that's something that we have invited the, I think we still have three that are in the county. Ms. Smith is one, um, Ms. Sokol Scott another, Ms. Sharp of course is one. Um, Karen Walker. Mm -hmm. So just, 
I feel like if we have teachers that that have the knowledge, we're not spinning our wheels on things that maybe we shouldn't focus on in TAC for the year. So I'm curious, I'm hoping you're in support of that decision as well. Yeah, I think that's a good good idea, actually. So, um, TAC would like to find ways to boost teacher morale. Uh, so that's something we plan to talk about this Thursday and I will bring back to you in January. Um, I don't know where that starts right now. Uh, I know with the low performing schools, teacher morale is, it's ebbing and flowing. Um, and we all know that when teachers are excited about what they do, the kids are excited about what they're learning. Um, so I feel like it's something with the personality that I have, um, and of course the position that I'm in this year, that we may be able to come up with creative ways that are effective, um, not costly. Um, and if you guys can think of things, you know, that would work well for us, please feel free to share. Feel free to share with me via email or talk to me in January. Something to think about. Um, two more, and then we're almost done. Uh, as the TAC lead facilitator. Um, I've been working on collecting data from the council and their on-site colleagues in order to pinpoint what Brunswick County School teachers would like to specifically advocate for um, and or improve in North Carolina or Brunswick County. And so again, I sent out a survey uh, about 10 choices of things that were kind of um, at the top of the list of that are teacher concerns. And one that I wanted to make you aware of and just see where you think we could go with this was um, the state mandate of the class size reduction for HB 13. Um, <coughs> it has left us with more students in the classroom and not enough teachers in our schools. Uh, I know my numbers personally at Leland Middle, I have six to eight more students in my class than I did last year in each class and I have six classes. Um, I'm averaging about 32 students per class uh, and based on the interest of other TAC members they're kind of feeling it in the schools as well. Now I know we are a county, this is a county group um, and I know that the HB 13 is a state mandate um, but I know you guys love teachers and you show it by giving us a voice up here um, and I'm just curious to see How can you direct us? How, what can we do? Where can we go? Um, I feel like we could advocate all day long, but how do we use our relationship with you guys, the board members, in our plight to advocate for this? Our classes are just too big. Do you think we ought to <coughs> maybe look at or ask Representative Eiler to? He's someone I thought about. I know he's um, our go to a TAC meeting, attend a TAC meeting. He's usually really active in our school. Well, to have I, some dialogue with him. and I'd like to suggest one thing uh, that I think would be great to get your feedback on, and, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, what can we do to increase the enthusiasm with students for learning? And I think there's something there that requires, is required of all of us, but uh, particularly um, kids that don't seem to be getting it, and without the enthusiasm, they're just going through the paces. And uh, I'd like to see every child uh, enjoy school and feel like uh, they want to learn. So how do we go about inspiring um, or in creating greater enthusiasm? That may be something that we could help with. Not sure how yet. Right. Um, that's a very broad question. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have expected you less, right? Talk in January. <laughs> So, and I, I, back to you again in January. Um, I know how I do it in my classroom. Again, that's something I think you know, we can talk 
to talk about. Um, I think like he's one of the reasons I'm I have this position is I do have a passion for what I do. I I, I love coming to work, um, even though my class sizes are large, as I've stated. Um, it's a challenge every day, and when they come in, it's I want them there, and I think teachers, for the most part, feel the same way. So it's just a day to day to day, and there's there's a lot of things that probably need to happen or can happen to help benefit that enthusiasm because we are their experts in their eyes. Well, we, we as a board and I think as an administration uh, have looked upon the idea of career technical education as being something that we would like to move towards and to, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, emphasize the importance of. Uh, but there's an interest gap mm -hmm. that we have to deal with. Career and college ready. Mm -hmm. And that, that's part of what I'm getting at, is that interest gap, or interest deficit. Uh, because it doesn't matter if we offer the courses if the kids aren't interested in taking them. How we present it. I'm sorry? How we present it. How we present it. It makes a bit, I, I feel like that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it goes back to connecting the dots that Mr. Lennon was talking about, mm -hmm. making it relevant as well. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it, it is an it's a growing trend in education to recognize the importance of co collaborative skills, problem solving, and those kinds of things. And that requires much more engagement by students, which implies interest. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's something that I think we have to nurture along with our thoughts about what additional course offerings and you know, directions that we want to see the school system move in. We also have to nurture the students to be prepared, and as well as the teachers, mm -hmm. for new and emerging trends in education. Getting back to your original question, Mr. Tubb, uh, have you heard anything recently about H -Bill, uh, H -Bill, uh, House Bill 13 and what the future is in that? The future of it is that our class sizes in 4 through 12 are going to grow. Um, the flexibility for next year will reduce and um, in grades K through 3 and um, there is a discussion has been a lot of discussion through the superintendent's organization um, going back and it has been forwarded through um, the Association of Curriculum um, folks and through um, the school administrators, not just superintendents, but principals and assistant principals. Um, and this information has been forwarded to our, our General Assembly with concerns as to where we are. I know today I filled out a, an inventory to, that went back to the Superintendents Association that will be forwarded to the General Assembly as to what we have had to do um, here in Brunswick County at this point and what we will probably have to do next year in the way of um, and, and it looks like I think in cabinet we were talking what 10 teachers maybe additionally next year Dr. Meadows at least 10 additional teachers to meet the, the class size requirements in K-3 um, it's also talking about we have talked about uh, and, and it was indicated on the survey that I completed uh, the modulars that we're going to have to to look at and modulars right now. Dr. Meadows attended a, a conference um, just recently where one of our sister LEAs has um, approached the manufacturer for these modular units and that manufacturer has none available because he has a contract with the government that the modulars are being shipped to Puerto Rico to support what happened um, with the hurricane. And so in looking at this and in the cabinet today, I know Ms. Rutledge was, was talking about and has identified the possibility of moving some of our older modulars and refurbishing them because it looks like we're going to have to have um, the modulars. As you know, we took um, the uh, our labs for comp uh, computer labs and <coughs> 
ran, uh, moved the computers out and then put um, false walls in it so that we could have two additional classes in the K-3 um, arena um, to meet it. Um, so it, it's not a very <coughs> bright future for House Bill 13 and the implications <coughs> that um, we have uh, coming to us next year and the additional implications. We are fortunate though, much more fortunate than a lot of the systems that we were able to implement um, the majority of House Bill <coughs> 13 already. Um, but it is going to, it'll be in a, probably an additional 10 um, classroom teachers. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Could, could we flag uh, a subject to come back to at a later date? Sure. Uh, and, and I think it's an important subject because what you're describing is chronically oversized classrooms uh, in the upper grades beginning next year. And I'm just wondering in the programming phase of some of our current projects whether or not we're providing adequate space in classrooms. And this is a conversation, Mr. Chairman, that we would be happy to, to bring to you and the, your fellow board members um, with where House Bill 13 sits for next year and, and the, as we look at the implications, bring those implications to you again. We know it's going to be um, tough at Belleville. It's going to be tough at Town Creek. And what's the third one, Dr. Meadows? Southport. Well, and just to get back to Ms. Phillips, I, I can understand why her and other art teachers are experiencing a growth in yes, their sir. class sizes, and it probably has nothing to do with the bill. Well, I think our, the teaching positions that are, okay, let me think about this for a second. I think that our class sizes are larger, not only because Leland is growing, because Leland is growing. And I know that we have the middle school in plan, and that's coming in a few years, so that will alleviate that. Um, but I guess the fear for your enrichment teachers, and uh, feeling it this year too, is our classes are growing because the, the K-2 classes are smaller and teachers, like you said, there are going to be 10, you're going to need 10 more teachers next year. Mm -hmm. So do they come from somewhere else or are they within the county? Um, we're one teacher short at Leland Middle School in the elective department. So we're feeding in, we have class sizes that are probably going to be about 42 in some of our classes and that's not the band. So the concern, it, it's difficult to do Bigger what I rooms. do with that many kids. Well, then that, that reinforces my concern about the size of classrooms. <laughs> Could you use a larger art room? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll take a larger <laughs> art room. <laughs> of course. Right. Yeah. We'll move it out into the courtyard. There you go. <laughs> um, yes, there is, it's just something that's on all of the teachers' minds, at least the ones that are really feeling it right now because this being I think the pilot year that we're testing out the the class size mandate so, um, I'm gonna save the last one for next month because I know where it's 710 and I know y'all have business to take care well, of, so. of <laughs> are you sure Absolutely. okay one more um, so I'm gonna propose something uh, maybe a little bit unorthodox um, so I'm just going to throw it out there and you tell me what, what you think about this. Um, something, conversations happening in the Teacher Advisory Council are wanting to build more positive working relationships with our Board of Education, with our Superintendent's Cabinet, which we have at TAC. Um, Mr. Tubb has been to every TAC meeting and given us the information we need to know and we feel a connection with Mr. Tubb because we see him once a month in that sense. Um, we would like to spend time with you guys as well. We would like to get to know you. Um, and I'm going to be honest. I didn't what think I you wanted us there. What? No. I didn't think you wanted us well, there. I was there a few years ago, but then I was asked not to come back. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Well, <laughs> but not by scary. teachers. <laughs> um, well, I guess what you I'm proposing. We used to rotate. We used to rotate some of the board members on there. I think You're years ago really when I first started. It. She's not really tack. necessarily talking about talk, uh, at the TAC meetings, but no, other no, informal no, gatherings. No, just an informal, I would love to sit down with you, Mrs. Cook, and talk to you and get to know you. What I know about you guys and what TAC knows about you and a lot of the teachers 
is what we see on the website. And that's just how it is. That's the reality of what your job is, and we understand that. Is there any way that you would be willing to give us a day to sit down? And as silly as this sounds, so I know you're going to laugh, but I'm thinking teacher mind right now is like muffins with Miss Milligan. <laughs> or, or lemonade with Mr. Lemon. <laughs> or coffee with Mr. Lemon. I got Cook. Somebody's got <laughs> Cookies and I'll bring them for you. I'll bake them myself. <laughs> I know it sounds neat, but it, it's definitely one of those things. It's a lighter moment. There doesn't need to be an agenda. I won't ask for mileage. I will facilitate. It's about relationships. That's, that's right it's on. It's all about I mean, relationships. And know. I think if we can build that, then the trust level goes up. We're more effective. We're more, it's more set up. And I found this that I, I wanted to say because it's, it's a really great way to look at um, what we do. Um, we want to focus more on the opportunities instead of the problems. And I think if we can get to know you guys as people, that may happen naturally. So will you look at your calendars, email me, you could give me a date right now, I'll write it down, and we will um, try and make this happen. I'm taking bets how many times they'll re-invite me. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, we did, we used to have a board member that attended the tax, and so I don't, I mean, you know, the, the, but I mean, in the past, so, and that's just one thing, so. Ms. Milligan and I are retired, so whenever you want. Yes, <coughs> So. so I'll contact you two first. Okay. Okay. You were serious about a day? Yes. That's a, for working people, that's a, that's a big request. Well, it would have it's to be after boss, school it. hours, of course, but. <laughs> I'm already on the outfit with my boss. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're busy. We, 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 we know that. We are busy, you are busy. Um, but I think we can make this happen. If, if it happens one time in the entire school year, wonderful. If it happens more than that, that's even better. So that's all I all have. Right. You're good. Thank you. Thank it was you. fun. Thank you. Did you have fun? I did. Yeah. That was enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, next one. We don't have any public address, so the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the meeting agenda. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion by Ms. Cooper. Second. 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 Mr. Thompson, all in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the approval of minutes from November 7th regular meeting, November 21st operations, curriculum, policy, finance, and HR. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the minutes for November. Motion by Mr. Thompson. Second. I second. Ms. Milligan, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our consent. Items only two on there. Um, do we have a motion for that? To make a motion, we approve consent items. Mr. Lemon, that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Cook. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's no action items. Um, next thing is the discussion announcement by the superintendent. And the first one, you want to do all those? It's just we have, you know, our December committee meeting coming up on the 12th. Um, the 12th. And as you know, your um, next board meeting will be January the 9th. And in tab number five in your book, um, we have listed the dates for the uh, regular meetings during the year, fiscal year 2018. And as we know, some of those change. <laughs> A time yet for the committee meetings, right? No, sir. We will. It's usually going to be at the three o'clock or three thirty time frame, like we have had them in the past. I know that this upcoming um, committee meeting, we do not have any operations. An opera, there will not be an operations committee meeting due to the fact that we do not have um, information for you at this time. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is closed session. Do we have a motion to enter closed session as stated on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'm here to Okay, motion by Ms. Milligan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Cook. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we take five? Please? Take five minutes, yes. 